Yeah, you know, YouTubers. I did a video a couple of years ago about my method of casting bullets, and and um, I've had quite a few messages and emails since then asking what guns I use them in, because I only said at the time that I only cast for three five seven and four fifty four, and um, I thought I'd do a quick video here, just showing you that what uh, what handguns I actually use my casties in, um, and yeah, so. The 357 that I had at the time was a Smith & Wesson 686, but I've sold that. And um, I also have a Colt Python in 357, uh, which I don't actually have at the moment. It's in getting a, uh, it's in getting the barrel set back because it had quite a lot of end play and a big cylinder gap. So that's um, that's getting sort of set back and tightened up a bit to hopefully so it'll shoot a bit better because it wasn't a very good shooter. I think it's had a very hard life. Um, but anyway, I'll show you the rest of them that I have. One I've picked up very recently, but this one, the first, is my first 40, 40, 44 Magnum, sorry, that I bought, um, which will need no introduction. Anyone who's watching this will know exactly what it is. Yes, it's a Magnum Research Desert Eagle in 44 Magnum. This is the Mark 19, you can tell by the Picatinny rail on the top and a few little other bits and pieces. This is just a fun gun to shoot, it's not really my serious competition gun. The sights on the back, they're not even really adjustable for elevation. And um, I don't know anyone else out there who has a Desert Eagle in 44 Magnum, but mine shoots about 18 to 20 inches high at 25 metres. So I've got to hold really low for this one to actually be on target. I've even started. Um, I've even started holding, uh, you know, like how most people. I don't know if you can see that or not, but you know how your your normal hold is sort of like that. I've actually started to hold with my front sight down at the bottom of the groove. I've got to get that much drop in it, but um, nevertheless, it's a very very fun gun to shoot. Um, and no, I don't actually shoot cast bullets through this one. This, I have been told, and it makes perfect sense that if you shoot cast bullets, it can block up the gas port, which is just at the front of the chamber here, because this is obviously a gas-operated pistol. So, um, yeah, if you shoot cast bullets, whether they be hard or soft or gas-checked or whatever, they'll, um, they'll clog up that gas port and make it very, very difficult, if not impossible, to clean it out. I suppose you could if you had the right machinery to do it with, which I may soon like a mill and a really long small drill bit or something like that but anyway the, um, everyone I've spoken to definitely dissuades anyone from shooting cast bullets in that one but it's so I only shoot jacketeds of course but nevertheless it's a very very fun gun to shoot and um, surprisingly accurate when you can get the hold right but anyway so that was the first 44 that I bought the second 44 that I bought which I only picked up a couple of months ago, I thought to myself, if I ever see one of these for sale, I'm going to get it. And look at that. Again, everyone would probably recognise that. The Model 29 from Smith & Wesson in 44 Magnum. Their end frame double action revolver. This one is the 29.2, so it's the older style one with the counterboard cylinder and the pinned barrel. Um, apparently these are one of the most common ones you can find on the second-hand market, but nevertheless in Australia they're extremely hard to get. So that as soon as I saw this one come up, I thought, you beauty, I am having it. So I've only shot this one, I've only taken it out to the range actually once, which was the other day. And um, I was very impressed with it, very impressed. I put some lighter loads, some mid loads, some magnum loads through it and it, it all seemed to go pretty well. I think I might need a bit of a harder cast lead to go with this one because I'm shooting the 245 grain Keith style bullet from uh, Lyman which is uh, not gas checked so you've got to be quite um, you got to be quite careful with the hardness of the lead you use otherwise it can start leading up the barrel pretty quick but uh, nevertheless I'm very happy with this little gun or big gun, depending on the way you look at it. Yes, it's got the eight and three eighth inch barrel, and um, which gives it a nice good sight radius for those longer shots. I found that it 
at uh, 200 meters where I shoot the uh, where I knock over the big rams for metallic silhouette I was um, hitting them without too much trouble with some of those bigger bigger rams at longer distances so that was um, I'm very happy with that little find and it's in good nick too so but I don't think I'm going to push it all that hard I think I might keep it for my field pistol matches which are the um, out to 100 meters because I'm not really happy about putting those really really hot full house 44 magnum loads through it because it's an old gun it's in good condition I don't want to I don't want to hammer it apart I'll just keep those mid-range uh, loads for it and this one on the other hand my 454 Casul from Magnum Research again like the Desert Eagle made by Magnum Research this is the BFR 454 Casul seven and a half inch barrel on it although it's funny I wonder where they actually measure measure them from because if you look at them next to each other the Smith & Wesson is an eight and three eighth and the BFR is seven and a half inch and look they're pretty much the same length but when you measure it it's eight and three eighth from the mouth of the cylinder or seven and a half inch from the frame to the muzzle so I think it just depends on uh, on who measures it but anyway um, I won't go into too much detail about these two because oh, you know there's that many videos on the model 29 and the desert eagle and everyone's just you know there's an absolute wealth of information about these two there aren't many videos of the BFR there's quite a few of the freedom arms revolver and rightly so they're a beautiful revolver I've shot them myself and I was um, if only I could afford one, I would have bought one over this. But nevertheless, Magnum Research did a very good job of building this revolver. It's like a bank vault. It's tight. There's no end play on the cylinder whatsoever. There's a tiny little bit of side play. I would say there'd be only about 5,000 an inch at most. Cylinder gap's tight, probably only three, two to 3,000 of an inch, if that. Inside of the cylinder's recessed for those really high pressure... 454 loads. One thing I really do like about this as a single action revolver is when you flip open the loading gate, it free wheels both ways. Makes it really, really easy to load and unload. And um, lovely, light, crisp trigger pull as well. Adjustable front sight, adjustable rear sight, sorry, elevation and windage, very adjustable, very easy, and very accurate. In fact, I think the best group I've ever shot with this was. It must must be that the 454 likes hot loads because the, the tightest group I've ever shot with this was my 300 grain Lee flat nose gas check bullets. They're going at about 1500 foot a second, so they're pinging along. Hot recoil at 25 meters. That shot a one and a half inch group. So with and that was with five shots too. So five shots at one and a half inch at 25 metres out of a handgun is pretty good. But basically the size of the bullets there just cut one big hole. So I was very happy with that. So I think I'll, um, next time I'm out at the range, I'll put a video up of me shooting this because I think, I think, that I know there have been other videos on YouTube published about the, uh, about Magnum Research's handguns and, and the fact that they're, they're good handguns for, uh, for their money. But when you, search BFR all you find is the uh, well it's mainly the the 4570s you know the big great big long cylinder things they have with the big rifle calibers and all that with them but um, I think I'll I will sing this its praises because I think it's a very 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 good revolver um, the grips aren't original though I might add I'm, I actually made these grips I had a set of old timber grips that were for a um, Actually, it was for this. I, I, bought a, I bought a set of grips. They were kind of ergonomic grips for the BFR, but I, I didn't like them. So I basically just sanded them down and shaped them, you know, for a classic style uh, single action. So um, I'll do a video of me out at the range with this, knocking some rams over, as some have asked if I could do. And um, I can also show the... The difference in recoil between my my standard match load and the full house full power loads the load that i use for this at most matches 
out to, well even out to 200 metres is pretty much only a 44 Magnum equivalent. It's a 255 grain bullet going at about 1200 foot a second, something like that. So it's only because really you don't need much more power than that for silhouette shooting and also that with these full house loads that this thing shoots it's uncomfortable after about 15 shots. I mean yes you could, holding it properly and all that, you, you can shoot it all day but your hand gets bloody sore and also when you're shooting next to other competitors they tend to get a bit annoyed too. So um, yeah that's just a quick run over of, the, of what I actually cast for apart from the Desert Eagle. Um, not forgetting the Colt Python, of course, but I don't really shoot that one too much. Again, that's an old gun. I don't. Re I think it's had a pretty hard life. I don't really want to put more stress on it than I have to. I only ever shoot light loads through that. But these two are definitely my go-tos now for my silhouette use. And this one always comes out when, oh, you know, when you just want to have a bit of fun because it is fun. Anyone who's shot a Desert Eagle knows it's fun. Completely impractical for most things, but a fun gun to shoot. And, you know, for the majority of us, that's what we're in it for, aren't we? To have fun. To have fun and spend a lot of money on these things. Well, that about wraps it up for this. I might do a few more videos of, um, of the casts and loads that I use for them and definitely some out at the range, me knocking over some plates and having a bit of fun with them. So yeah, I'll catch you around the traps. Have a good one.